What's going on YouTube? Today we're going to be going over fishing. Probably one of my favorite gold making methods because it can be done any level, any DLCs, and it is a number one way for you guys to get money. There's lots of little nitty gritty pieces that you guys can do to mid max your fishing powers, different places that you can go fishing, and we're going to get into all of that in this video. So if that's what you're here for, you want to learn about how to fly fish and how what consumables to use and I don't know why I'm doing an accent I'm sorry I didn't have any other jokes to write into the script so I apologize but best places to fish best items to use best champion points to allocate and overall like what places you can go fishing and all the little nitty-gritty pieces about it and what you can use your perfect row on because I think that's another important thing many of you will know that you obviously get perfect row from fishing Many, maybe you didn't, but hey, that's the main reason you do it, is you get a very rare golden item from skinning your fish together. The best part of that is, is that that perfect row is used for a lot of end-game consumables that a lot of players will need. So we could talk about, should you be selling that perfect row? Should you be utilizing that perfect row yourself? Should you be putting it into a recipe versus selling it you know, wholesale? We're going to be getting into all of that. Just a quick reminder to leave a comment in the comments below to be entered into the giveaway. And now let's start talking about fishing. So I wanted to first talk about places to fish because I did state in my preamble that you don't have to be, you don't have to have DLC, you don't have to have levels. So you'll notice that I'm currently in Arteum which is a DLC location. However, there's a very particular reason for that, and you don't necessarily have to be here. But let's talk about why fishing in Arteum and fishing in Somerset is slightly more lucrative than fishing elsewhere. Starting with Arteum, you're able to get waterlogged Sigic Satchels. Many of you will be very familiar with this because I did a whole video on this, and this is probably one of my original videos that did extremely well and it is one of the videos that I'm thankful that you guys had blown up because it's one of the videos that kind of put me on the radar as a gold making method YouTuber. So thank you guys for that. But for those of you who missed that video, waterlog Sigic Satchels basically have the ability to give you a couple different recipes such as the waterlog Sigic recipe, the Arteum Pickled Fish Bowl, which we'll talk about later, and the Arteum Takeaway Broth, which is a very good, you know, recipe to be used. It's actually best in slot for a lot of uh, individuals. Now, conversely, there are people who like to fish in Somerset. So let's talk about why that is. And there is a style motif, which Payendion? Don't ask me how to pronounce it. You, obviously, you can see it. That is only being able to be gained by fishing, which means obviously it has a pretty decent resale value because if you can only fish for it, well, then it's pretty valuable to get. The number one areas to fish are in this cove here and this cove here. However, just for you guys, I have found a really cool external link that I'm gonna put in the comments and the pinned comments below that has every single zone's best fishing locations. Because as I said earlier, you know, there's a lot of different places for you guys to go and not all of you guys have these DLCs. So if you do not have a DLC and you're like, man, I really want to fish, I want some easy gold that I don't have to level up for because a lot of methods require you to be CP 160, which is kind of, you know, it's kind of bullshit, you know. I want you guys to get gold right meow, even if you are 160 or if you're not 160. And let's say you don't have any DLCs. Well, the easy solution to not having DLCs are these islands. Why islands are so good is basically they're small. Betnik especially, Betnik also has significantly less, um, spawns on the beaches that will attempt to attack you which you may be noticing that there's nothing here in our tam which is why it's one of my favorite spots is nothing's here to interrupt my you know good old fishing trip so you've got all of this location that you guys can go fish again the add-on will be it's what an add-on and it's a map so if you're an at pc player you can download this add-on and it will physically put the actual fishing holes on your map and if you're not then it will basically, like, it'll say, like, hey, like, bing, bang, 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 bang. These are all the fishing spots are. Go check these locations. If you do not play on PC and you struggle to see fishing locations, I strongly encourage you guys to get the Hismir Fisheye, which basically will make it very easy for you guys to see um, fish spawns. 
Now, I'm not currently using that, and that's going to be the second other suggestion that I have for you guys that we'll talk about in just one second. Why I suggest this, though, to start off is, is that you guys might be very new uh, to finding, you know, fishing holes. And it can be a little daunting to see. You can see, like, right here in front of me. Let's say we were looking away. You know, this is this is, can be a little hard to see. Just that little, like, blip in the water can be very hard to spot. But obviously, I fished here so much, I know that I could just go here. Now, I am currently using the Artaeum Pickled Fish Bowl, which basically gives me a higher chance to get rarer fish. Now, rarer fish are an interesting kind of mechanic because they can be quick sold for gold but they can't be turned into perfect row so you do get a good chunk of gold for them but you do not have a chance to get perfect row so don't think that you need to use the artem pickled fishbowl it will grant you more you know fish per hour but it's not going to grant you you know you're not it, it's not going to make a huge difference because keep in mind too these pickled fish bowls cost clam gall to make so these things are pretty expensive you know, it's not like you get these for free. So if you're not making your value back, you know, every two hours that you're using these, you know, I encourage you guys to consider, you know, do I really need this? Same with the Hismir Eye. Once you know where all the spawns are, it's not going to be like, a, oh, I need, you know, to go out and use these, you know, every single time. It's more so like get an idea, like if you're using a specific island, if you're on Artam, if you're on Somerset, get a really good grasp of like where your spawns are based on where you are and then go from there. Another thing too to quickly point out before we get into the champion points is, is that each one like if you are saltwater fishing, saltwater bait, if you're lake fishing, lake bait, etc, etc. All of the bait is pretty cheap. You can purchase it, you can farm it. I really wouldn't worry about bait costs. For those of you guys who are new to fishing, if you have questions about bait, you can always ask me in the comments below, but it's really not anything super crazy it's more so just very straightforward and if you've been playing ESO and killing undead and picking up things like you probably have tons of bait but if you don't again you can go purchase it in somewhere like Mournhold, Vivek, Wayrest, Elden Root for super cheap so don't don't stress about that let's talk about champion points now because champion points are pretty simple so the two best things that I really suggest for you guys are real techniques and anglers instincts now Angler's instincts really doesn't make a whole lot of difference because, again, we're going for that perfect row, not this, like, oh, you know, I really want to get blue and purple fish because, yeah, like, getting, the, you know, a couple hundred gold to resell is kind of neat, but it's not helpful. And this also points out another really interesting tactic is that if you're grouped with other people in the same fishing hole, you will have a higher chance to gain higher quality fish. I personally actually don't do this, though. Um, because then I have to go find new fishing holes. So if it takes you one minute to find a new fishing hole versus getting one extra minute of fish, you know, it's really, it, it doesn't equal out in my opinion. So that's where my kind of thoughts are on the fishing with friends kind of component of things. But I wanted to wrap up on the perfect row because there's two really good things that you can craft with perfect row. And that is the Smoked Bear Haunch and Sigic Ambrosias. Now, I personally am a huge fan of utilizing Sigic Ambrosias for selling because lots of people need XP. Ever since 810 is no longer the XP cap, how many people do you see that are 3,000 plus CP? Not very many, which means a lot of people still need XP. So people are still buying these XP potions especially when double XP events come out. So always keep an eye out for those. There's other things that you can use your perfect row on, and I will put those on screen for you guys to see. But again, a lot of times what you'll notice is, is that perfect row sometimes will be completely strapped off the market because a lot of people don't fish. Um, and a good way to tell if it's worth selling your perfect row, we'll take a little bit of a field trip here to Deshaun. So we are now in Deshaun, the happiest place on earth, inside of Mournhole, which is the capital trading facility. And we are going to be looking now how much Perfect Row is on the market and is it being traded at a very high capacity. So you can see right off the bat, there's a whole guild trader that has zero Perfect Row. It's a good sign for people who want to be selling Perfect Row. Another one. So this is a very good like 
thought experiment for you because if you notice that there's not a lot of perfect row listed and here you can see there's there's a decent bit but there's not even a whole page full and keep in mind there's 500 members in each of these each one can have 30 slots if I was very fast at math and I could give you a correct answer I would tell you how many listings in total they could have so the fact that there's not even a page full of a perfect golden item is pretty crazy uh, you'll probably see some in some of these traders here you'll see again there's about similar amount listed probably a little bit more than higher stack size and then isle of blades has a little bit but you can see that overall compared to other gold resources right now it appears as though there's not as much perfect row not even a single guild trader has a pages worth or if i was to switch this to like waxes tempering alloys or something else i would see a ton of it this isn't to say, though, that you might not be on, like, PlayStation, EU, NA. You know, this is just specific to Xbox NA at this very particular moment. So if I was looking at selling Perfect Row, I would look at the cheapest listings, which I believe I saw in Breaking the Wheel, and I would go 18K, stack size of 5, which is pretty incredible because that means that I could probably get out more money if I was selling individually. I could probably get, let's see if there's a stack size of one. There's not even a stack size of one. Oh, there's a stack size. Right here at the end, 20,000. I could probably almost eke out 20,000. Maybe slightly less if you were trying to get it to sell. But 19,000 gold for a perfect row is pretty hot. Because if you were to look at, let's see if any Sigic Ambrosias are being sold. So you can see here we've got one Sigic Ambrosia for 6,000. Which is actually a very high market value for these. You can see 5,900. But this is another thought experiment to do too, is it's like, okay, well, how much are these Sigic Ambrosias selling for? Because that's something that I would use to create Perfect Row with. Important, obviously, to remember that one Perfect Row creates four Sigic Ambrosias. And another thing that I want you guys to get in the habit of learning and thinking to yourself is that these have been listed for 18 days for 6.5K. So it's likely that they're not going to be selling that high. So just keep that also in the back of your head. Like 6.5K seems too high. It has been up there for 14 days now and it's not been selling. 4.9K seems like it would be much more appropriate, but it's still been listed for five days with no sale. So do you just keep that, always keep that thing in the back of your head. Like, okay, we have stack size, we have time listed, and we've got other such kind of little minute details. Pay attention to all that when you're price checking items. But that is going to wrap up today's video. I again think that fishing is one of the number one gold methods in all of ESO. Again, it can be done at any point. I don't also want anyone to be discouraged who does not have these champion points or the ability to purchase any of these items to feel as though that they cannot do this method. You definitely 100% can and I encourage you to fish even if you don't have the champion points to get all of the passive perks. Like I had said earlier, it's definitely better for the perk where it's like there's going to be higher biting quality is fine but you're just going to quick sell quick selling is really not that big of a deal it doesn't matter if you're going to get fishes that are worth 100 to a couple hundred gold yeah it's neat that you do but again re want that big ticket perfect row item because that's going to be what we're going to be making most of our profit on consider using those two items we talked about it earlier You'll obviously be able to know like which one suits you better. If you really want to go for those items, if you need help seeing those, you know, spots. We talked about the champion point allocation, and we talked about selling perfect row, and if you should be refining it into other types of resources. We talked about all that. So that's gonna wrap up today's video, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys. You better remember to like and subscribe to Jake Clips. Oh, you should. I might have to pluck your eyes if you don't. Or, better yet, I'll skip rope with your entrails. Do it now. Subscribe. Ta-ta. Off with you.